Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on configuring a tab strip control on a user form in Microsoft Excel. So I have on this worksheet three ranges, and each ra range contains areas of focus associated with different levels of degrees. Uh, this first one, a bachelor's level, the second one, master's, and the third, doctorate. So I have here a user form that I've configured that uses a tab strip control to display in a list box the different areas of focus based on selecting the degree. So you have bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. Now these ranges are dynamic named ranges and they can be found under the formulas selection on the ribbon under name manager and you can see they each have a distinct name one is bachelor's degree you can see it uses the offset function to select the items in column C that are populated so if you were to add or subtract another area of focus to bachelor's degree this range would change to match the size uh, similarly, uh, master's degree selects just the populated cells and then another dynamic name range named doctorate that does the same thing for these areas of focus. Now, I have a separate video that covers how to construct dynamic name ranges, but I wanted to show you uh, these names, the names of all these ranges, because we'll be using them as we build user form. So I'm going to build another user form that looks very similar to this one and that behaves in the same way uh, from the beginning. So first I'm going to start by adding a way to access it. So I'll go to Insert, Shapes. I'm going to select a rectangle. And I'm going to put that rectangle beneath the one I already have in here and change the color to orange. Now I already have a macro that opens a blank form. So I'm going to assign that macro to this button. It's called Open Form 2, and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. So select that and click OK. I'm going to select the orange rectangle, and you can see a blank user form comes up, and this is the one I'll be working in. Uh, it's not exactly default. It has a custom caption and a blue background. Of course, I resized it. So let's move over to Code View now, Alt F11. And you can see here's the original one in green. And here's the one I'll be working on. And I want to show you the code that opened the user form. So it's in Sheet 1 Data. You can see it's Sub Open Form 2, and it's just User Form 1, which is the name of this. Uh, user form here. The caption is main form 2, but the name is user form 1. I'll show you that. See it's user form 1. User form 1 dot show. So fairly straightforward. And then you'll assign that macro, uh, in this case, to the rectangle. So moving back to the code view, I'm going to close these code windows out, and of course this is the code for the other user form. So now let's take a look at the blank user form. You see the toolbox here to the left, and you'll notice that there's a tab strip, and that's what we'll be using. Uh, and there's also a multi-page, and these two often get confused. So I'm going to show you the difference. I also have a separate video on the multi-page control. But when you're using a multi-page control, and I'll just throw one on here to show you, uh, think of it as uh, each tab is a separate frame. So if I were to put a control, like a list box, on page one, and then you know have it populate with data and have the selections execute some other function, right? This would all be on page one. If I went to page two, you could see it's blank. So I could put uh, maybe a series of text boxes on page two. And it's going to treat it like a separate frame. 
So you can see that list box on page one and these text boxes on page two. A tab strip works differently. So if I were just to expand this um, user form a bit, and I'll add a tab strip here. You see it looks fairly similar initially. And say I'll add a list box to tab one. Notice when you select tab two, it persists. It's the same exact list box. So the control persists through the different tabs. Whereas with the multi-page, they're really separate frames. So both very useful controls, but for different purposes. So for this demonstration, I'm going to retain the tab strip. So I'm going to delete the multi-page control. I'm going to move the tab strip up to the top. And notice that the list box control does not move with it because it's not, it's not in it. So put that in there. And then change the size to kind of match what I have going on in terms of the size of this tab strip. So for the example I have here, I want to add another tab. So I'm just going to uh, right click on tab 2 and select new page. So now I have tab 1, tab 2, and tab 3. So something important to recognize about the tab strip control is you look over uh, for the properties for tab strip, you can see there's one named value and I'm on tab 1 and the value indicates 0 and tab 2, 1, and tab 3, 2. So tab 1 starts at 0 and it goes from there. So this will be important to reference these tabs uh, for example to change the names. So we're going to want the, the row source of this list box to change as we change tabs, as we select different tabs. So we're going to double click on tab 1 here to open up tab strip underscore change. So I'm going to copy the code right over from the other user form and then explain how this works. So I'm going to put some spaces in here just to make this a little easier to read. So I'm using a select case, right? So we select case tab strip one value. When the case is zero, which remember is tab one, then the list box one row source is set to bachelor's degree. If the case is one, then the row source is set to master's. And if the case is 2, which of course would be tab 3, it's set to doctorate. So let's go over to the worksheet view and take a look at how this functions so far. So you notice it still has tab 1, tab 2, tab 3. And when it's opened, the list box is empty because I don't have anything set up under initialize at this point. But if I select tab 2 or tab 1 or tab 3, it's going to populate with the areas of focus consistent with uh, bachelor's degree, master's degree, and doctorate. So moving back to the code view, we now need to add the code to initialize the user form. So we'll go up here to tab strip 1 and select user form and then initialize. I'm just going to delete this empty subroutine for click. And again I'm going to be able to take the code from the old or the original user form and just copy it over. And I'll show you what this does. So you have here the changing of the captions. Like you don't want the tab 1, tab 2, and tab 3, probably. 
be more preferable to have the actual name. So tab strip one dot tabs, and then you refer to the index. In this case, um, the value we talked about, zero is for tab one, one is for tab two, and two is for tab three. So that is dot caption, and then equals, and you put the dynamic name range, uh, in a, or, or a named range. In this case, it's a dynamic name range in quotation marks. So you have bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. And you'd also like, when it's in initialized, for the list box to have the correct information listed for whatever is active, whatever tab is active. So to do that, all we have to do is call uh, tab strip one change. That's that's the line of code. It's call tab strip one underscore change. So we're calling this subroutine up here down in the initialize. So now let's take a look at how it functions. So you can see that worked, right? So it it initialized the names came in bachelor's, master's, and doctorate. And even though I haven't clicked on a tab yet, it populated the areas of focus for bachelor's degree because that's the tab it's on. And then master's and doctorate. So the tab strip control is really useful for when you have the same set of controls, whether they be list boxes, text boxes, check boxes, or whichever controls you choose to use, but you want the same arrangement of controls to appear on every tab. And as you click the tabs, you want the data appearing in those controls or that affects those controls to be from a different location. I hope you found this video on configuring a tab strip control on a user form in Microsoft Excel to be helpful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.